So the worst it could go it could get is civil war. I think the best we can express is probably a depression. We're already going into it. As I said last night, you know what we do? We we print money to solve our problems, and all that does is increase debt and creates more freeloaders. Social welfare. I'm not against social welfare, but don't print money to pay for.、It. At the same time, our debt escalates. Our debt to GDP right now is 120 percent. At 90 percent debt to GDP, we're bankrupt. That means for every dollar we spend, we go deeper in debt right now. So our debt is now in the trillions. I don't know how many trillions it really. I've heard it's two, two hundred sixty trillion. I don't know how they measure it anymore. At the same time, they raise interest rates into a recession. This has never been done before. So that's why I'm saying that somebody intentionally doing something to bring America down and the world down. And there's a video of Trump speaking to I think the United Nations or something, and he's telling the German contingency back in 2018. He says, "Don't trust the Russians. Don't depend upon the Russians." And now Russia can cut off their power. So there's something really goofy going on. I'm not privileged to find out about it. I just I want to put some fear into you, because the more dangerous the mission, the better you've got to be. Stock markets, when they crash, go down in three phases: boom, boom, boom. Phase one was was a bounce. It was called a bear market rally. This baby is going down. I hope because I'm going to get richer. See, the thing right now is, if you're afraid, it's because you got bad advice in your head. You're operating on bad information from your mommy, your daddy, your college professor, your school teachers, whatever it is. I get sexually stimulated thinking about a crash. Yeah. Because I'll say it again: the tougher it is, the smarter you've got to be. I do this because it's proof. I said it: the biggest stock market crash in history is still coming. And I said I'm going to change the title to "Is Here." This is the biggest crash we'll ever ever see in our lifetimes. It's called the Everything Bubble. Everything's going to come down, and that's how you can prepare for it. So for most people, that's bad news. Crashes, everything goes on sale, and you can't get rich at that time. You know, like right now, I'm in Hog's Heaven because Saks is always having sales, so I keep buying stuff I don't really need, but I'm in there shopping. But the most important thing, the 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 what. This country and the world needs, as you know, Europe's in trouble. They don't think the EU is going to make it. China's in trouble. Japan's in serious trouble. The world's in trouble, and it's in trouble because of lack of leadership. And as President John Kennedy said, leadership and learning go hand in hand. Basically, we need more leaders, ladies and gentlemen. But this country sorely lacks leaders. I mean, this—I'm not Republican or Democrat. But I, I just can't believe what's going on in our government. I mean, how can they open the borders? How can they cut off the Exxon, I mean, the Keystone XL pipeline? How can this guy blame Russia, for, present blame Ukraine and Russia for our problems? We have sh- food shortages. Sri Lanka, which is the richest one of the richest island nations in the world, is in rioting right now. So we need leaders. This is the time for you to become bigger leaders. Because I think people are kind of waking up that maybe it's our leadership that's the problem, and this is your time to become leaders. More people need leaders like you than any other time in history. I mean, my God, ladies and gentlemen, this is your time. But your time is because the country and the world needs real leaders. There was a guy named Jordan Peterson who said,、um, "If you think tough men are bad, just see the damage a weak leader can do." Yeah, we've had weak leaders all over the world right now, so this is your time. Remember, leadership and education go hand in hand. And there's a lot of people who are not here to learn or not not learning because they're in probably in college or something, learning nothing. The worst case, which I hope I'm wrong, be civil war inside America. That's more than a crash. It's a civil war. And my prediction is that Donald Trump and I are good friends. His sons and I are good friends. I went to his son's wedding here at Mar Mar a Lago. And、uh, he's a leader. If they try and put him in jail, I hope they don't. We'll have a civil war because this last election was stolen. I had I had lunch last Saturday with the、uh, Secretary of State from West Virginia, and he says America is watching Arizona, and they want to figure out how we handle it because they know he says it's not fraudulent. It was criminal what they did with the ballots. But again, it was a man named Stalin who said, "It's not who votes that counts; 
It's he who, she who counts the votes. And ladies and gentlemen, we lose the right at the ballot box. We lose our democracy. And that's why this raid on Mar-a-Lago violated the Fourth Amendment. We cannot let this country come apart by these criminals running our government. We need new leaders immediately. You know, when I was prepared, I was at Camp Pendleton preparing to go to Vietnam as a Marine helicopter gunship pilot. Our life expectancy was 30 days. 30 days. Now, most people said that's not good. I said, well, it inspired me to become a better pilot. The purpose of a leader is not to be the leader. The purpose of a leader is to take what a great leader like Patrick does and pass that lesson on. Adversity makes you a better leader. It's probably the most important thing because we're going into some very, very adverse times. Everybody turned me down. And again, as you guys know, salesmanship begins when the customer says no. But again, it's adversity. Or as Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge. So I said, how am I going to get past the book publishers? And that's when I started writing my little brochure, the story of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which turned into the, uh, the, you know, the book. They still turned that down because they didn't like what I said. And I've had that problem most of my life. You know, when I flunked out of high school twice because <clears throat> I couldn't write, ironically. Uh, I flunked out when I was 15 and I flunked out when I was 17 because I was saying that, saying things the teachers didn't want me to say. I said, why am I wasting my time in school? <laughs> things like that. But anyway, uh, when they turned it down, I called a friend at a car wash in Austin, Texas, Keith Cunningham. And I said, I have a thousand books. I want to put 12 in your car wash. He says, yeah, on guaranteed sale. I said, yeah, if they don't sell, I'll take them back. And so I put them in his car wash and I kept calling. He said, they're not selling, they're not selling, they're not selling. And then one day he said, they're all gone. And I said, you want more? He goes, hell no. But that book traveled to a guy, uh, this doctor friend of mine, and he was a, a diamond in Amway. And he took it to his up, upline diamond uh, up in Dallas. And from there, the floodgates opened because I was saying the same message that they teach their entrepreneurs about business. So Amway was my start. And my friend Donald Trump and I are about the only two guys that endorse network marketing. Not because we endorse network marketing, but we have to have more entrepreneurs. I did the same thing in my cash flow board game in my books. I pass on what I was taught. That's how you serve other people. Hmm. If you understand that,